There's a spirit of love in this place. There's a spirit of love in this place. You can't see it, but it's there, just as precious as the air. There's a spirit of love in this place there's a presence of peace in this place there's a presence of peace in this place in god's tenderness is found peace that passes human bounds there's a presence of peace in this place. Oh, alleluia. Sing alleluia. Bless your holy name. Sing alleluia. Sing alleluia. There's a presence of love in this place. I want to welcome you to our worship for the 30th day of May 2021, where officially or culturally here in the United States, this is called Memorial Day Weekend, where we hold in honor and respect and those who have given their lives over for something much bigger than themselves. We memorialize them. We remember them. And on this day, we begin a new worship series called Come to the Table, based on a, a, a short a hymn by Barbara Ham. And there are different verses in this hymn. Come to the table of hope. Come to the table of peace. Come to the table of grace. Come to the table of love. So for the next five weeks until the 4th of July, we're going to begin this on Memorial Day. We're going to finish it on Independence Day. We're going to discuss and, and, and uh, dive into what does it mean to come to the table? What are the challenges there? What are the joys there? What do we bring with us? What do we receive when we come to these tables and the biggest piece of the verse theologically that really has tapped into my being and I implore you to consider is the verse that says or the phrase that says this is God's table it's not yours it's not mine come to the table of grace or come to the table of hope and Parker Palmer actually writes an essay about staying at the table where he uses the communion story or the, the, the beginning story of the Passover right before Jesus was crucified. And he talks about staying at the table, that, that Jesus stayed at the table even though he knew one was going to betray him, even though after three years, uh, still those disciples were trying to decide who should sit at Jesus' right side and, and who was had more power than another. And, and so much was going on that night that Jesus could have just said, you know, you all just don't get it. And, and just kind of dust his feet off and go on. And that really becomes the challenge because he did offer that parable. If someone says, no, we don't welcome you here just to dust your feet off and move on. And so what are those tables that we come to? What are those tables that we stay at? And what happens when we join one another at a table as we look one another in the eye? This will be our journey for the next few weeks as we have come out of really remembering the early church and that their main worship was to gather around table and to break bread together, to offer their hearts, to offer their lives to one another. 
So I invite you this day and in these ensuing weeks, as specifically as we emerge from a pandemic, right? We're going to be gathering around tables more and more to hold in your own hearts what it means to understand this as God's table. So come, worship with us this day. Join us at this table. Come to the table of hope. Come to the table of hope. This is God's table. It's not yours or mine. Come to the table of hope. Hello and welcome to Kids Connection. This weekend is a special weekend. If you've been in Boone, you will have seen flags up and down the street and in some cases they're lining the sidewalks being stuck in the ground because this is Memorial Day weekend and it's a time that our country remembers the many, many thousands of lives that have been lost in wars that the United States has been involved in. And so for this weekend, we stop when we see the flag and we remember those who lost their lives. Now, in biblical times, <clears throat> when they were, there was a memorial to be made or the, a God moment that they experienced, like, for instance, uh, Abraham was trying to find his way to his new homeland of Canaan, and he felt like God was leading the way. And so he built an altar to remember that journey. And the altar it can also be called a cairn. And cairns are made by stacking rocks. You might have seen some by the river banks. Um, sometimes at Price Park, people will make a little stack of rocks, a monument. Well, we're going to make a Karen here today, and perhaps you might like to make one in your yard um, or in some place when you're on a hike, if you see something that um, makes you stop and go, oh, that's so beautiful, or... I want to remember that I've um, been down this path, so I'm going to build a cairn. So I have these two big rocks that I found in the yard, and you can just stack the rocks if you find rocks that balance really well, but I might have to use a little bit of glue with mine. We'll see if, if it sticks together. If you don't have any pretty rocks like these round ones, you can go to the dollar store they have packages of rocks. I have a collection here, and um, they're just mostly small and smooth and, and about two, three inches long. So, let's see. I'm just going to pull out a few more, but this one might need a little bit of glue to help it stay in place. Huh. Let's put, try to put one more in there. This one, I like to decorate rocks. And so this one I made, and I stuck an acorn on the top of it. That might be fun to put at the top of this Karen. And so this could be, with a few more little decorator pieces, you could make something like this and leave it along a trail side. And that would be a Karen for other people to enjoy when they came by. And they'll recognize that spot as a special place for somebody who chose to remember it with a stack of rocks. Remember? Remembering is a, an important part of enjoying life here on earth. Remember the special times and build a Karen and have a very good week.
I invite you to pray with me wherever you are. God of the morning and of the night, God of our spaces and of our hearts, we ask you to be present with us here across space and time. May the words of my mouth and all the meditations occurring, may they all be pleasing and acceptable in your sight and in your hearing, O oh God, our rock, our healer, and our redeemer. Amen and amen. I'm sitting in my kitchen at our own dining room table to offer this word here on this platform. In our live space, hopefully tomorrow if it's not too cold, uh, we will be outside on our lawn where to my left and in front of me there will be picnic tables. Uh, just over a year ago, about in May of 2020, right at the beginning of the pandemic, underneath our pavilion that was an open space with a concrete floor and a gorgeous ceiling where some of you have seen videos of this, four t picnic tables randomly showed up anonymously. They just showed up out of nowhere. And when they came, with them came a, a spirit of sweetness to me. It was an invitation to come sit at them. There was automatically a sense of community. And then when you would walk up to them, then there were choices to me made, right? Because they're picnic tables. Or, or do you sit on the bench with your back to the table and you lean up against it as you're looking out over maybe some other people at their own picnic tables? Uh, or, or do you show up to them solo, right? With your, with your tablet, with your book, maybe with your own lunch and just enjoy that space or, or does someone else sit across the table with you and, and now you're in conversation with one another literally in an intimate moment uh, looking uh, eye to eye and last summer i found myself sitting often at these picnic tables the bleep the breeze blew through these the, the pavilion and we were in the beginning stages of this pandemic when we didn't indoors was we knew not a safe place and so i would just take my laptop off and then just sit out there and some of you would come and join me either at the picnic table over the way or at the other end of the picnic table and we would enjoy conversation the energy there was calm the space was inviting and then we began to have four to six people we all had our own table as we sat there even though we had our own table we were still communing with one another underneath the roof of the pavilion and for me as i think about that time and i think about picnic tables and or tables in general well there's a there's a there's a face-to-face -face piece that offers or invites an intimacy uh, often tables that are linear or straight uh, they bring about a closeness within our own relationships. And then we add a placemat or a, or a tablecloth. Maybe we add dishes or glasses or cups. And, 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 and are they ceramic? Are they plastic? Are they paper? Are they fine china? Then the whole atmosphere begins to change just by deciding what goes on top of this table. And then am I alone? So in, in a pandemic, maybe I come with a smartphone or a tablet and I FaceTime others so that I'm not eating alone for week on week upon week. And then I know many of you, you actually began to turn the TV off. And in this pandemic, you began to cook again and you began to make time around table to actually be in conversation with one another. And maybe you find yourself at a park or you're hiking and, 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 and you're in a space that maybe isn't familiar to you, but, but here is a table. And, and for some reason, it just invites us, right? There, it invokes a sense of gathering together. There is a welcome there. There is an invitation to say, come and sit here at this table. On Friday, I met two of our graduates who are in the process of moving. And, and those picnic tables that we sat at, well, they have an extended uh, end on one end for accessibility. And, and right there, the invitation and the welcome, well, it grows and it grows. 
And for many of us across this land this weekend, depending upon the weather, we're going to focus on rituals around Memorial Day. Picnic tables across our countryside, well, they're going to be laden with, with barbecue or burgers or, or maybe food from the deli or, or, the, or the grill. And then we will gather around those tables and I wonder who or what we will memorialize. Who or what is important enough that warrants our thoughtfulness and our own energy to be offered to hold, to to keep sacred, to remember, to memorialize, to build those rock cairns as Sandra offered to us. We remember those who gave their lives for something much bigger than themselves. We remember them. And I hope that we too remember tables known as lunch counters. Another sort of table where food is served and community is created as the same people show up across diners and cafes finding their same spot, right? Every Tuesday, Wednesday, or Friday. And, and emerging from the pandemic, they're going to return to these diners and these cafes expecting their spot at that counter to be right there waiting for them. And, and these same lunch counters, well, in the 60s, they became scenes of struggle. Our black lives that matter among us, they, they sought dignity, they sought respect, and they sought to be seen as human, to, to receive treatment of respect when they sat together at those tables. There is a hope for a community realized. That hope Last week, we talked about hope that is unseen and only can be felt in the groaning of creation. Well, that was going on around tables called lunch counters. And so when Barbara Ham wrote this music, Come to the Table of Grace, I actually doubt she was considering a, a picnic table or a lunch counter or even a conference table. When we hear these words that Barbara Ham wrote, come to the table of grace. It is God's table. It's not your table. It's not my table. Come to the table of grace. And I wonder about the tables that we encounter, picnic, conference room, dining, or buffet. How might things change if we saw each of them as gods. Truly then our, our tables become sacred. They are sacred. And, and truth be told right now in many of our homes, I had to clear this table away. It was kind of piled high on one end. Some of them are stacked high with mail and books and the sundry papers. We haven't seen the whole tabletop for months, some even years. And some of our tables, well, well, they've been worn so heavily, they're, they're scratched and they're nicked. And so we cover them with a cloth, maybe a quilted tablecloth from our grandparents or maybe a piece of fine linen. We cover over the blemishes of time and experience. And, and some of our tables, well, they haven't had food placed on them in months, Right. Because we've moved away from the table that collects us and offers us sight to one another. And we've moved to the couch or to the chair in front of the television screen. Or maybe we just stand in the kitchen distractedly over the sink and, and eat our meal. And I know many of you, many of us in this last year of staying at home, well, we've rediscovered the table. We've cleared it off and we've rediscovered sharing meals with one another, looking at one another in the eye. Even those of us that are isolated and solo, we've used our tablets and our smartphones. Phones. We, we, we've FaceTimed one another. We've set up a Zoom call to share a meal together with family and friends, knowing that in our isolation, that is not always good. We've actually turned off the television and we've actually found time to cook a real meal. And in this time of pandemic, one of the good things is we have slowed down enough to sit down and eat and to taste our meals. 
And so as we emerge, these tables are again becoming restaurant tables. Or, or maybe we're showing up on a friend's deck. Or maybe indeed we're returning to the conference room tables. Or maybe we're returning to break room tables. Maybe we're even finding those formal dining rooms. Whatever the case, when we gather around table, we break bread with one another. We share our stories. We listen to one another. We share the jokes that we've heard that day. We share the day's struggle or the day's challenges. Maybe we offer the newest story that just opened our heart or touched us deeply. Maybe we share an intimate moment because we're only a few feet away from one another. And when I hear these stories and I imagine what it means to sit around a table, will I hear our text for today found in Romans, the 12th chapter. Hear these words. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Have good zeal, seeking the Spirit. Cont contribute, contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Even around the table, bless those who persecute you. That is challenging, is it not, around our own tables? Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. I know around some of the tables I'm around, it's about who is, who's right, right? Uh, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them a drink. Do not be overcome by evil, but instead overcome evil with good. Come to the table, Jesus said, and remember me. Come to the table, Jesus said, and remember me. For this is God's table. It's not yours or mine. Come to the table of grace. May it be so. Come to the table of grace. Come to the table of grace. This is God's table. It's not yours or mine. Come to the table of grace. Come to the table of grace. Coming to the table specifically for meals was one of the number one places that we prayed together as we offered gratitude and thanksgiving for the bounty of the feast that fed and nourished our bodies. Uh, that used to be one of the, the main things that we did as we gathered around the table, and we have lost that to some degree. I encourage you as you come around to these tables that we pray for one another. And on this Memorial Day weekend, uh, as we remember those who have gone, many of us have lost uh, loved ones in this last year, whether to COVID or, or other, other ailments. One of those was Susie Miller. Uh, her birthday is this month in May. And as we remember her, uh, I want to invite you to hear her words that we are to pray for one another. Okay. Am I ready? You're ready. Okay. Since I heard about your faith, and your love for all God's people. This is the reason that I don't stop giving thanks to God for you when I remember you in my prayers. I pray for a spirit of wisdom and revelation. I pray that the eyes of your heart will have enough light to see what is the hope of God's call, 
what is the richness of God's glorious inheritance among believers. The gathered body, the church, is the fullness of Christ who fills everything in every way. Ephesians 1, 15. Susie continues to delight me. Uh, she died this past January of, t of 2021. And as we remember her and those whom we have lost this weekend, I invite our hearts to be opened to, to grieve, to lament, to, to know those who have gone before us, to remember their stories, to remember their lives, to remember what they offered to us. And, and there are parts of us that definitely need to grieve. And so in this moment, I invite you to, to hold space for those whom you have lost, uh, who have been lost to you. If you wanna write those into the chat box or to send an email that we might pray with you, please don't hesitate to do that. As we met uh, live last Sunday for the first time, probably this is one of the places within these videos that I miss the most is the live interaction and be able to literally feel your spirit and to hold your prayers and to pray with you and for you. Elizabeth is gonna play a song right now called, uh, May the Eyes of My Heart Be Opened. And I invite you to hear this prayer as our eyes are opened to the joy and the grace that happens when we come to tables to praise and to offer gratitude for those things that probably too often we take for granted. And, and to truly find the strength and the courage to offer a grief when we need to move through a time of loss, a time of hurt, maybe even a time of anger. What are those things that we need to grieve and to lament? So I invite you wherever you are right now to hold a space and to hear this prayer, to be a part of this prayer. God, you who have created us, you who have created beloved souls like Susie Miller, for those we have lost this past year, we name those now in this space. Our hearts yearned to remember them, our hearts grieve the loss of them, the joy that they offered to us for their spirits truly are lost to us. And there is a hole in our hearts that will not be filled by any other. May we remember them as we gather around tables. May we remember them as we share meals and tell stories with one another. And as we move towards the end of this month of May, and on this day, this weekend we call Memorial Day weekend, for all those who have served in our armed forces, they have given their lives in service to our country, to their country. May we honor them. May we hold them in a gratitude that is worthy of the service that they offer to us. And in gratitude, we celebrate the tables that are open, the gathering of hearts and souls around these tables, sharing their lives one with another. For there are too many wars going on around our world. For those in serious conflict, one with another, with bombs and guns and bullets, who we lament. Our hearts grieve and there is groaning too deep for words as we know we are killing one another. May we somehow rise out of the rubble 
and find a new world and a new life to live into. May peace come. As these Buddhist flags remind us, may we understand and be the peace we seek to know. And as we pray together, we know that through our very souls and spirits, new life comes, new life emerges. We are transformed in and by and through the spirit. May we have the temerity to be transformed. May we have the courage to seek healing and to allow healing to come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Emerge within us. Amen and amen. Truly, we are emerging from a pandemic, and it is exciting. And as we emerge, I invite you to consider how you are emerging specifically. What praise and joy do you have to offer to us, to one another, to those people who are gathering around your own tables? Know that in this time, we are still collecting and receiving whatever gifts of gratitude, of service, of intellect, of your hands, of your financial gifts, we receive those gratefully, believing that our ministry to offer a positive impact to the high country and beyond, that that really is our focus, to create safe environments for people to come together and worship. Uh, we are doing that live right now on our lawn, and we're trying to figure out how to get into our building so that truly we can live stream. Know that just today we had a training about the next step to be able to live stream that's going to incur a bit of a, a cost possibly so if this understanding of a digital understanding of worship from us is something that is calling to you uh, would you consider offering your own uh, gifts of tithe donation that would help us actually uh, incur the cost of live streaming and our own audio visual equipment Know that the ministry that we provide is to create a safe and loving environment to deepen our spirituality and to hold one another in a sense of grace, believing that when we gather at tables that we are understanding the sacred and the holy within them. And we want to be in praise and thanksgiving that we get to do that. So whatever that means to you, know that we welcome your financial gifts. And as you hear Elizabeth play us out, uh, may your hearts know a warmth this day, a heart of gratitude that we find when we truly gather around tables, sharing a meal together, breaking open our hearts, uh, sharing our bread with one another. Hear these words as we depart. Reverend Ken Sehested writes this. The church's Memorial Day occurs every time we observe the ritual of communion. The occasion is not only an enactment of transcendent allegiance, but also a proximate pattern for life. When we hear the invitation to the Eucharist, our Holy Communion, or some note by the Lord's Supper, do this in remembrance of me. The remembrance is not simply reminiscence. It is professed allegiance to the mandate Jesus set before us. What Clarence Jordan called the God movement. May we gather at tables and may we know without a doubt that they are God's tables, not yours and not mine. May it be so this week. Mm -hmm.